Now we're looking at the back plate and we're going to examine the prism mechanism. This would be a good chance to clean off the prism there. Um, you're probably going to want to clean the front part of the prism and that's going to require taking the whole assembly apart. So the prism slides. It's a, on a brass sheet metal part. Right now it's rather sticky and kind of jerky. Um, at the top here we have a single screw. It's a solid screw that has a groove in it and that groove receives the upper edge of this of this plate and that's what keep the, keeps this um, in place. Otherwise it rides on these two bushings here on this shaft that's held off from the back plate with standoffs and these fine little screws. And you can simply remove these screws. Um, first you'd be removing this screw with a proper fitting um, screwdriver and that allows the whole thing to pivot away if you wish. Up here you see the brakes and these are what limits the friction on this whole rotation. The engagement there is between the rim here of the support ring and just the front surface of this crescent shaped brake. There's no rubbing contact on the outer periphery and on this inner cylindrical wall here. It's only a forward uh, pressure. Now let me give you a caution. If you're tempted at this point to say, well, why don't we take out those brakes? We'll do a clean and lubricate. This one is really nice and smooth, but that's a place where it gets pretty dirty and a little lubrication does a lot of good. So if I simply unscrewed these screws, we'd be able to pull that brake pad out of there. The problem is that's the only thing holding the barrel to the frame. So if you want to take the whole thing apart, it's good, but be aware you need to support the front end of the barrel or this whole thing is gonna, gonna fall out. Ask me how I know that happens. So now this is the control box project and that includes lubricating the prism. So the, the easy way to approach this, which as you can probably imagine is not what we're going to do here, but the easy way would be for me to just kind of do some swabbing and cleaning and wiping and greasing and see if I can get this working fine and there's no reason to go any farther. Um, it's much easier to do all that with this in the vertical position because then our, our prism doesn't, isn't prone to falling off and we're not unscrewing and screwing things back in when they can fall out. We're working on basically a flat table and it's very handy. So we will always do that if we're gonna remove this for cleaning. And there's another good reason to do that, which is we're gonna do more than the control box on this scope. We're gonna be doing the, the drive arms, uh, the drive service and things like that. So I'm gonna to wanna to take the whole, the whole barrel off of the mount. And that starts with, well, we, one way to do that would be first removing the brakes. That's a little tenuous. Instead, we're gonna do these six screws which would be the large Bristol screws on a vintage scope and on a modern scope. This is a 2008. These are two millimeter Allen screws. And so that will then separate the whole barrel, including this ring from these um, arm supports on the sides. There's one little trick I found, and that is that one of these screws slightly interferes I'm exaggerating it here, but it interferes with that disc and with the drive disc. And so it doesn't really want to come out easily. You've got to do some sideways work on that. So I'll, I'll play with that. Basically what you end up having to do is just a little getting things loosened and all but that removed. And um, then you can move things around to adjust the angles. So now we're gonna remove the, the barrel and its ring from the mount. First thing I do is put a precautionary padding here in case something drops that'll, um, that'll protect it. This is the, the treble screw. It was nice and snug, gave a little snap, and here it's out just kind of against the, um, the drive ring. Actually, I can be a little, I'll cheat it here. Yeah, I, it just snapped right out, so that's fine. Um, the reason I did that is because that, that drive wheel is a failed one. 
not long for this world. So um, that's going to be replaced. Okay, so I got this held in with two things, with two screws. But this is floating up in space, so I'm going to rotate this down so that it can, um, so that it's resting on something. So if it does, something does come out now, it's just going to slide instead of drop. So this is our second to the last screw being removed. I'm going to hang on. Yeah, it never goes anywhere anyway. And then the last one. Out it comes. Set it aside. Slide this forward. If you want to slide it backwards, you end up with a lot of scratches on your moon map or your dew shield. Okay, now there's the barrel. And here's our mount. That's what we're left with. Important point, don't set this down. You'll scratch up your lens cap. And that's why I always have a $2.95 millimeter Nikon style uh, generic uh, lens cap. So I take my valuable collectible lens cap off. And the clip-on cap goes on and now we can work. Now we're going to go after the remainder of what's inside the control box and clean up the prism and its action and show you a little bit more of what's going on here. So we'll start with the uh, with the rotation brakes. You can see that this ring, which is attached to the mount, allows some rotation. It's a little gummy, it's a little sticky, and so they always need some cleaning. So that means we just simply back out these lightly not tightened screws. If they were tightened down, it would lock this in place. By the way, a little, little tip for you is that um, on the inside of about half of used Questars, on the inside of the arms in the paint, by the way, it's a little lock washer that got stuck in there. I'm living dangerously because I don't want that to go down the, the hole. Um, on, there's, on the inner surface, there's going to be a little arc concentric scratch there, and that's because somebody rotated the tube out of position and then um, slid it through there in the corner of the mirror bracket. Uh, we'll bang up the, we'll scratch up that paint surface there. And so um, that's one of those things to look for in a used model. Um, nice not to have that, but they usually do. You can see the, the washer there that provides a nice amount of tension. You really want to have spring tension there for just enough to keep it from um, moving unintentionally. And so on the very um, inside edge here is the only point, it's about a millimeter wide, is the contact that it makes with the little flange. I've unscrewed this other one. I'll move it all in one piece so we don't lose little parts. The worst place to lose a little part isn't in your carpet where you're never going to find it again. It's down the little hole here because that means you have to take apart the whole optical assembly to get a little washer out from there. We can now remove this. Um, there's going to be, so you see, gray grease on this reddish, um, this reddish gasket here. And the gasket is aligned with these four round plastic uh, pins. And the outer surfaces of those pins engage the inner surface of this flange, and that's what keeps this centered. If you had a very old model, those might well be worn down, but um, it only matters when you're rotating the tube anyway. So this is a little greasy and gummy. We're going to clean that up. I will re-grease that. It's nice to have grease on there and or below this gasket. And um, that's that creates a smooth action there. We don't want a lot of grease, just the, the lightest little film, and we'll discuss that later. So back to removing the, the prism shuttle, as I've called it. 
this screw here comes out that was supporting you can see there's a little it's a custom screw with a little groove in it that groove is is what supports the um, the edge of that bracket and beneath it unexpectedly because I've, other models have not had this there's a little lock washer which is a good idea and that holds it down nicely Sometimes I get a lock washer that's had all the life squashed out of it, and I will just, with pliers or, or fingers, I'll bend a little more spring into it. So now with my perfectly clean fingers, we can see how this can pivot away, and it still slides here, but it is sticky there. Before we dismantle, let's talk about how this works. Um, except in the 1957 model, where it's just simply brass on steel here, there are these little top hat shaped um, uh, bearings or bushings that are received in holes of the mirror shuttle and that have a, a hole that slides closely on this, on the slider rod there. You may find that when some people are used to flipping their, their finder lever back and forth, um, flicking it, it, it hits at the end, and these little top hats will bang against the brass standoffs at the end and will start to wear it out and, and uh, eat that up. Um, so my advice is controllable turning of those knobs is much better and keeps you from wearing out your scope. I had meant to be kind of a wise guy here and put my post-it over this hole so that nothing falls down there, even little bits of dust, and heaven forbid a blob of grease or something like that. So if you need to and you don't feel like taking the, uh, taking the, the rod off with its standoffs, you can very well get through here and do some level of a Q-tip cleaning through there and, and through this slot here. Um, and you're gonna be stuck accessing it that way anyway, because uh, as I've been advised, you don't wanna take this prism out. The factory has special alignment fixtures that get this prism properly aligned on the optical axis and in line with the axis of the eyepiece. So um, don't mess with that. Don't unscrew these screws, which is what clamps the prism in place. Unscrew these little guys, probably 80 threads per inch. This should just pull right out as it does, leaving a good glob of grease behind. So I'm just going to clean this up, clean this out. I'm not going to take those bushings out. When I've tried to replace those with new ones, it's never quite the same. So um, if we can make do with what's there, we're going to leave it as it is. And finally, that just leaves the focusing rod here. If you screw this in and keep screwing, and there's no, there's no knob on the end to prevent it from screwing in too far, and these remaining threads that would engage the thickness of the base plate get beyond the base plate, it allows the mirror inside to move forward, and that's what you do when you're disassembling the optics of the inside, that that mirror... Um, thimble that rides on the spindle can fully come forward. Um, and if you do it here and you lose your grip on the knob, it's going to just go slam down and crash into your corrector and probably ruin your optics and your telescope. So you don't want to take that one down too far. I will probably just, um, just clean up the grease around there, probably replace it with my own favorite brand. And um, there's nothing wrong with backing this out as far as it goes because when you meet resistance, that's when that mirror thimble has reached the full length of its travel and it's up against something and there are compressed uh, return springs that are fully compressed and you can't hurt it by turning it all the way. You can only hurt it by using extreme force to try and turn it past all the way. And my next step is to clean this up. Um, as I get started, um, I can tell you what I like to use for cleaning. My favorite is grain alcohol, also known as Everclear, and the reason I like it is because I don't have to worry about toxic, poisonous fumes. Um, I don't get any complaints within the house that it smells bad, that it doesn't smell like petroleum products, 
and it's reasonably, if it's safe for my liver, well, I should say, if, if alcohol is safe for my liver, I don't drink this form, then it's, um, it's safe on my skin and things like that. So it's a, it's a very light and easy cleaner. Um, and then only when something really requires petroleum do I use, um, you can get brake cleaner um, or gun scrubber. This is just a handy way of, of doing it. It's the same chemical and gun scrubber just costs more because it's for gunsmiths. But a $4 can of brake cleaner will, will do real well for you. And so I'm just cleaning up all the grease just because it's nice to have it clean and put in fresh grease. Um, I've said before that I use um, Helamax XP, which is helicoid grease for zoom lenses, and it's meant to be inside of camera lenses, which assures me that it's not going to be creeping, like some silicone uh, lubricants will actually just creep and wander everywhere possible. You notice I'm avoiding the black paint here. There is a lot of black paint on a Questar, and frankly, the, the silver gray paint on the cosmetic parts like the fork arms um, that will be degraded. If you go after a fork arm that's dirty with a little bit of this alcohol, you'll ruin the paint and, and you'll regret it. You'll at least ruin the, the clear coat on the paint, even if you leave the gray behind. So, so be very wary about um, cleaning painted surfaces with anything uh, clean Q-tip. So I have the focus rod threads clean. I'm just going to lubricate it a little bit. That just means getting enough along the length of the thread, starting at the beginning. Mm, it's a little goopy, but um, get that in there at the beginning, and then that'll just start building up for us, I presume. So before I start assembling the prism shuttle, I'm just going to do a little pre-lubrication on this rod just so that it has a light film on it everywhere. And by, by the way, I've, I've cleaned the prism uh, surfaces of grease. I'm going to put a little bit of grease in all the places you would imagine. One is going to be along this edge where it engages that screw, especially the lower edge where I'm not going to be able to put it on later once installed. I'm going to put just a little bit in these little apertures here. Just to make sure we're covered. And then I will slide it on. Then I'll slide this one on. I'm getting some kind of stickiness to this. I'm not sure if we just have tight bushings or what the deal is, but we'll see what we can do. I'm certainly not happy with that, but we'll, we'll work on that. And you'll want to get these nice and snug, but not stripped. I'll get a nice toothpick. We'll overdo with a little grease and see if that helps us out. That is helping. Too much grease, but you want to have enough. Now 
not as smooth as some I've done, but I think this will do. Okay, so that's back on. I'll do, I'll pause for a little bit of grease cleanup and we'll proceed in a moment.